welcome friends for this monthly meeting i am very happy to see all of you i want to share something a gentleman has written to me yesterday and since what he has written many others had written earlier i thought i should clarify something that he written this gentleman says he is an initiate of a master who initiated him 10 years ago he loves his master has faith he is a master but recently he had a chance to see a youtube lecture of mind and i have messed up his mind <laughs> he said you created such a big dilemma for me that after seeing your youtube i fall in love with you and i feel very guilty i am betraying my master it is like being married to one man and then falling in love with another woman or a woman falling in love with somebody and then falling for another man but i can't help it you have messed up my life I don't know the man and never met him. When he wrote that to me, I had to write to him about an actual story, very similar story, which I'll share with you. That's the historical fact. My master, great master Baba Sawan Singh, was the master in Dera Baba Jabal Singh on the bank of the river Bias in India. he was a disciple of baba jamal singh in whose name the dera is formed and baba jamal singh was a disciple of state shiv dayal singh swami ji from agra when jamal singh baba jamal singh set up the dera simultaneously another disciple named baba bagga singh also set up a dera with the same teachings with the same master in another town called tarantaran not too far from the dera so the two masters were there and this second tarantaran dera was called dera baba baga singh these deras were named after the founders of those deras when baba jamal singh passed away then my master baba sawan singh took over at bias when baba baga singh died there was a dispute about the master then great master baba sawan singh went there and installed another gentleman named baba deva singh as the next master so because great master was involved the, the two deras came very close to each other and people from one dera would attend meetings of the other even the masters would go and attend on the bandara days or bigger days so they both worked very closely there was a wrestler named pratap singh he was a wrestler very good wrestler he had been to college or university or school but uh, he knew how to wrestle he became a disciple of the tarantaran master baba deva singh when he meditated because he had attended the satsang of great master great master appeared he tried to fight it in his head i am not his disciple why is he coming interfering in my meditation when it continued he went to vyas dera and told great master baba sawan singh i am disciple of baba deva singh of tarun taran he is my master who my love when i meditate you come why are you messing up my life great master said if you if any disciple has a problem in meditation they should go to their own master for a solution i am not your master therefore you should go to your own master so he went back to his own master baba deva singh and told him how he was in a dilemma and he was doing something which he felt was very wrong 
that he was his disciple but when he meditated the other master came just because he had attended a few satsangs of his and baba deva singh said let me explain to you pratap singh masters are mere physical manifestations of a power we have called the word shab na that's a creative power that's created everything including masters including us including everybody including the worlds including universes they are merely physical representations manifestations of that power the power is the same from that point of view if you want to know who is a master the master is the shabd made into a flesh the word made flesh shabd becomes a body therefore from that point of view all masters are the same and when you are on a spiritual path it doesn't matter which master you have now how you know which master you have to go to depends upon the pull that a master has which it involves your love and devotion coming up automatically what you are explaining to me pratap singh the pull has come from baba saavan singh although i have initiated you you belong to this dera you working here doing seva here but your pull has come from baba saavan singh go and ask him if he will accept you as a disciple then he went back to great master baba saavan singh and told him this time i have come with my permission of my master and he says that the i am seeing you in the meditation because i am being pulled by you i am feeling love for you therefore i am seeing you do you accept me as your disciple great master smiled said of course they shook and after that he always had meditation of great master and problem was solved this is the secret we don't know that masters are as we see them merely ordinary human beings they are absolutely like us ordinary human beings the only difference is in their awareness their awareness has reached a state of totality of consciousness therefore they are aware of everything but they function here like human being like any ordinary human being but when they function as masters for disciples they are not functioning as ordinary human beings at all they are functioning as a representation on the physical plane of the highest level of consciousness so this should be clear that when we want to know who is my master at this time the answer is the one who pulls you when you feel pulled by love now the strange thing is and i watched it over several years for many masters that when a master is the right master for you may be a perfect master or not if at that time he is the master that you need for any progress on the spiritual path you will get feeling a pull automatically unexplained pull i call it unexplained because the rational mind cannot explain it but something happens and we want to spend time with that person we don't know why but something happens that is a sign at this time follow the guidance of that person and that person will guide you up to the level where he is proposed he is supposed to guide you and where you are supposed to go it does not mean that you have to be searching for a very highly qualified master just like when we have to school ourselves we start with elementary school then we go to higher if a young child says my cousin goes to the college i want to go to college it doesn't make any sense we have to go similarly in our spiritual journeys that we are having we go through many phases of the spiritual journey and we meet meet many guides many friends many masters in our life they take us to a point which we need at that time and obviously a master cannot take you beyond where the master is gone there are several levels at which masters exist the first level which is the most popular 
based upon religion. All religions say there is a heaven and God sits in heaven. Religion says God is not a power, God is a being and we worship. The truth is, yes, there is a heaven and there is a being running that heaven and is responsible for the creation of that heaven as well as this universe. But we who have been to masters who have gone beyond heaven know that heaven exists in what we call the astral plane. The, what is the astral plane? The astral plane is nothing more than a state of life, state of living without physical body. So when we have no physical body, we are still intact as a conscious being. A conscious being can rise to be at one time the head of a heaven. That's the God we worship. Therefore, when religions talk of a personified, a being as God and the prophets can go, saviors can go, sit on the right side of God, it's true. Therefore, when we are talking of God like that, the creative power like that, creators like that, they are right. That is the creative power that creates this universe, physical universe and the astral universe. Astral universe is just the name of another sky, another world, a higher world. It is very vast, much bigger than the physical universe that we know of. It has got so many universes in it. And heavens and hells both exist there. Law of karma, law of punishment and reward pervades there like it does here. You, you can do actions here and get paid off or pay off in the astral plane. There's a connection, big connection between the two. There are several enlightened masters. Enlightenment means having access while they're living in the physical body of that level of experience. When masters can achieve that level of enlightenment, that they can know that we exist beyond death, that there's a place where we can go with good deeds, with good karma. It's called heaven. And they teach us, it's a correct statement, there's nothing wrong with it. But those masters are thinking that is our true home. They are thinking heaven is our highest level. And therefore they promise we can go to heaven. Do good things and you go to heaven. Not a wrong statement. But that's the level of the master. Then there are masters who say that is merely part of creation. If there is space and time, it is still creation. If God is sitting somewhere, it is space and time. If you can go and sit with God, it is space and time. There is an area above that where space and time are created. Where the scene is set for the astral plane to be set up. That is the real place. And that is the place from where everything is coming, including time, space, karma, and the highest levels of abstract thinking is coming from there. They call it the causal plane. And they think that's the cause of everything. Which is true. All creation, including astral plane, has been created from there. Most of the masters that I've come across are considering the causal plane and describing it as a true home. Because they say all creation comes from there. There's nothing wrong. They're true. Even heavens are created from there. God are created from there. So that is why nothing can be higher. Our mind, which is trying to learn things, understand things, cannot understand anything that is anything beyond a causal plane. Because the mind cannot understand something that can exist inside a zero time and zero space. No matter how bright you are, no matter how intelligent you are, how sharp you are, if I tell you, I have seen a mansion, huge mansion, the dimensions were 
zero and it occurred in time zero. Nobody can understand it. I may be telling the truth. Therefore, most of the enlightened masters who have come here, who have helped people, who wanted to go beyond the astral plane, they were feeling the seeking in such disciple to go beyond astral plane existed and therefore they appeared in their life. They took up to the causal plane from where everything is created. Everything that we know of, including our minds, our bodies, our, our senses, everything created from there. How can you say there is anything higher than that? Very few handful of masters come from for seekers who are seeking something beyond. Where do these things come from? When the seeking goes beyond and you are not satisfied, only ten masters beyond that point arrive and tell you that mental thinking, mental decision making is just a function of something attached to you called the mind. The mind is not yourself. You are life that makes mind alive. You are life that makes your sense perceptions work. You are mind that makes your body alive. All this can be intact if there is no life, it's all dead. Mind is dead, brain is dead, body is dead, everything is dead. Therefore, there is something beyond that, which we have tried to call by different names because the mind cannot understand it. Some kind of a stories and analogies have been given. They call it that consciousness, the ability to have experience, which is actually the nature of life, exists beyond creation, beyond any creation. That it exists in order to function as consciousness, which means to be conscious, you have to be conscious of something. What you are conscious of as pure consciousness becomes creation. If you are conscious, what is consciousness? Why has the word consciousness been used for it? For the simple reason that if consciousness is a potential capacity to be conscious, whatever it becomes conscious of becomes creation. Actually, that is how it functions. But that consciousness does not need any space or time. That consciousness does not need anything except its own self. That is why there are masters who are beyond the mind, beyond the causal plane, who tell us our reality is totality of consciousness beyond the mind and not the creation and the creative power that they made of this. It's beyond the God that we worship. When they come up, they're very few because they're very few seekers asking for more. Most of the seekers are satisfied with the master they meet and every master, because his own experience is limited to one level, thinks that is our true home. They all call it the true home, the final destination of a spiritual journey. Those seekers who want that, they hear from a few masters that the soul is our reality. It's just a name given. That what our reality is, immortal. Nobody has examined what immortality means. <coughs> what is immortality? People are trying to see what is immortal forever. Forever is time. It is not immortality. Zero time is immortality. When there is no time, you are automatically immortal. So when we talk of our ultimate reality being immortal, we are talking of something beyond the causal plane into real spiritual le levels. The spirit, the soul, the life form, the consciousness is immortal. We put into mortality and bring into the causal plane into creation. We bring into more mortality, bring it into the sensory systems of the astral plane, bring it into immediate mortality, living very short periods, 50, 100, 120 years in the physical plane. The mortality rate, of course, is such that we are here for very limited time. Astral plane, little longer. The experts have told us the astral plane, the average life of a being with the same mind, with the same soul, is 
1000 to 3000 of physical years. Not a big time at all. But the causal plane where the mind is get created and time and space are being created, their time is measured differently and the being that is sitting here today with all this intact can live and the mind lives for a few million years, three to five million years of physical time. Time is different in different places, but in physical terms that we know it, there is such a huge difference between time frame. But the immortality goes when you go out of time and space. So the immortality we talk of is the real immortality of our true self, which is using a mind as a cover to create time, space and creation. It is using the second level of astral self, which is nothing more than sense perception. Astral body, not a body like that. The soul, which is life, covered with a mind which thinks and understands, covered with sense perceptions, is what the astral body is. All those have to be there to make it alive. And when this astral self is covered with a physical matter, we call it physical body. We are sitting here in a physical body with all this intact. It's not going anywhere outside, it's all inside. It's all something surrounding the reality of ourself. Therefore, the way to our true self is within. Why within? Because everything that I'm mentioning is created outside of it. We are surrounded by it. These bodies surround us. We can call them three bodies. We can call this physical body made of matter. Atoms, molecules. What else? Inside is a body that's alive, that can think, that can have sense perceptions, can see, touch, taste, smell. These sense perceptions we are ascribing to the physical organs of the body are not really being operated by the physical uh, organs at all. If you are unconscious, eyes can be open, you don't see. You need to be conscious, you need to be aware to be able to see with the eyes. Eyes don't see, something else is seeing inside and also we have two eyes, I sometimes mention, they are seeing two different things. We combine them. These eyes cannot combine two pictures at all. We combine them and see one image. Where do we combine it? Either you go to a 3D movie and they'll give you glasses to combine or you combine them in your head. When you want to understand, I am seeing two images and two eyes, where am I combining them? Just try to understand where do you see the picture. You discover it's behind the eyes, in the center of the eyes. That's where you combine like two. These eyes cannot do it, this body cannot do it, and who is doing it? The astral self carries those sense perceptions and therefore it combines. All sense perceptions are coming from the inner self. Now, when we die, we are not killing everything. We are only killing, only the body is dying. The rest is intact. So, disembodied form has everything in it. It has got power to think, power to see, power to touch, power to smell. Every power, except it doesn't have any physical self. When a person dies, and knows that I am not dead, only my body is gone. It's a very strange experience. Because people were assuming when they were living, body goes, everything goes. It doesn't go. It's quite a startling experience. For most people, very startling experience that when we die, we are not really dead. We are alive in a different form, more real form, longer living form, a form that existed before we were born in the physical body, a form still existing after we are dead. How do we know that they, they have startled? Because when they're dead, they don't speak to us. We can't hear them. How do we know that this is the truth, what I am saying? This is made possible because we, through meditation, have the means to experience death while we're living. We can right now, in our physical bodies, experience what exactly we will be like when we die in the physical body. Now, if that is available, 
and it's a very beautiful way to know exactly what will happen when we die and death will no longer look like finishing of life it look like just changing from one form to another the dying while living has been prescribed by all spiritual teachers that try to get the experience of what you are if you didn't have a body meditation is really a means to do that meditation is a means to withdraw your attention inside to yourself not outside when you are putting your attention outside the outside experience is your only reality when you are sitting outside with attention outside and somebody says truth is inside you close your eyes there nothing inside attention is all outside when you put attention inside there nothing but darkness there oh you open your eyes you see you close your eyes there nothing why should we close our eyes when we can't see anything now but the problem is that we are not doing it the right way we have a great power called imagination what is imagination let's say you can imagine something i can imagine that i am flying in a boat in a airplane in the sky today most of you would be able to do it there no airplane there no flying who is flying when you imagine you are flying is not somebody else flying you are flying that means you have a capacity in your consciousness to do something which is not physical at all imagine this is not physical at all and yet if you imagine you are flying you can see the plane you can touch it you can smell flowers and you can do anything that you were doing with this body except there is no physical matter in it where is the imagination coming from okay forget imagination we go to sleep and have dreams in dreams this body is lying in the bed sleeping we forgot that it is sleeping we think we are moving around somewhere else who is moving around not somebody else the same person the same being was sleeping not anybody else the same self is sleeping and having a dream somewhere else seeing things touching things smelling things exactly all sense perception that means we have something in us which can hold our perce- sense perceptions together even if this body is not active that's the whole secret that if you can hold your self in imagination that you are not outside but inside this body that you are using your sense perception inside which is easy to do if you put your attention at that point where the eyes two eyes which look outside combine the image inside which has been called third eye sight third eye means nothing except the combination of this eye which actually sees even physically even physically we are seeing from third eye these two eyes are not combining the picture we are seeing therefore when we put our attention at third eye center that means when we are awake we are even looking at this world from that central point where is that central point it's very very precisely at one point in the center of the head most protected part of the physical body behind the eyes and between that space how far back as far back as the ears are so if you want to know really the simplest way of knowing where third eye center is i can tell you draw two parallel lines behind the eyes draw one line across from the two ears where the two lines and these intersect that's a small little place in the center sit on it there for you are when you are awake all the time people tell me after doing lot of yoga and all that we are trying to search third eye center i said friends do you realize you are talking to me from third eye center there is no other place you can talk from as conscious being that the only place you talk to me when you are awake when you are sleeping dreaming you may be moving somewhere else 
not when you are awake. When you are looking at me with the eyes, there is no place from where you can look out except the third eye center. Now, what do we do in order to experience what will be like after death? Put your attention on yourself by imagination at that point. That means, imagine you are sitting there. Instead of imagining you are in an aeroplane in the space outside, imagine you are inside the head. Not for all the time, only short while. Only for a very short while. Imagine you are there between your ears, behind your eyes, in the center. What will happen? Your imagination will expand that space. It won't look like a small little head you are sitting in. Because you will feel you are as big as your ear. You don't have to make yourself small. You just have to imagine you are there. When you imagine you are up flying, same size as this. You don't have to practice becoming small to sit in a head. Then you remain in the head. People make this mistake thinking that third eye center is part of a physical phenomenon and we have to sit there. Not at all. Third eye center is merely the point from where you are physically awake and therefore physically you can imagine you are there. Once you imagine, it's a whole space. It can be a big garden. Why not imagine a garden? Why not imagine a big house? You can imagine anything. When you imagine you are in a garden, the garden is not small. And you can imagine it. When you imagine here, this head disappears. You are no longer connected to the physical head. You stay in the garden then. Don't come back again and again to the head to find out third eye center. Many people are making that mistake. When you are there, you have placed yourself at the right place where in the wakeful state, you can withdraw your attention as much as you like. You can concentrate your attention over there. When you concentrate your attention, gradually you discover you know more of yourself in the imaginative state and gradually you begin to forget about the physical body and anything outside. It's a gradual process. But the gradual process can be seen very clearly. You will feel it that when you are sitting there, if you suddenly want to know where are your hands, you won't know. Where are your feet, you won't know. You still know you are here. The rest of the body you know is here. You are meditating here. What has happened? Where are my feet? Hands and feet disappear from awareness first. Legs and arms disappear next. The bottom of the torso disappears next. And then your total out of body feeling and you are not aware of the body if you concentrate your attention at that point. That's meditation. Then what do you experience? When you complete that, what happens? You have a thinking power the same that you had before. You are alive like you were before. And you have a mind that does the same thing that before and is imagining things like before, but you are not aware of this body. You have pulled out the awareness of yourself from the body and that is called dying while living. Then, next step is even more important. In that state, you can fly, you can do whatever you like. Don't try once again to say, am I still at third eye center? You will run back into the physical body again. Your attention will go back. Fly with that. Do things with that. Jump with that. Dance with that. Sing with that. Eat with that. Do what you like there. It starts off looking like it's imagination. But very soon you will find that is your reality for that time because you have pulled out from this reality, physical reality. But is it still all imagination? That question can still remain when we are not there. When we are there, you won't have this question. Answer right now is, when you are in that state, try to remember something. When we are here, when we try to remember something, we always associate that memory with this body. What did I eat today? I remember because I had breakfast with this body. What did I do last year? I'm trying to remember about this body. When you are not in the body, in the inner self, which has sensory perceptions, try to remember what happened. Go back in memory. You will be surprised and startled, startled 
by the fact you remember what you were doing 100 years ago 200 years ago this body wasn't even there memory is a great thing to tell you who you are without memory we would have no past we would have no future we know nothing the memory is what keeps us here i am i am who i am because i remember who i am memory is so important the memory there in the sensory system will rem make you remember things that happened way before this physical body was born not only that if you then look at a mirror in your imagination you will not see this body you can see changes in your body as in the mirror images will change depending upon how far you are going in your memory nothing can be more convincing to individual than to remember one's own past not going to these people who say will you give you past life regression or you were cleopatra and you were so and so you were king said those are stories you have made up don't listen to somebody else about your past find your past yourself discover your past and it can be discovered this is only step 1 but if you do that you are enlightened you are enlightened this body is not yourself that is enlightenment that you are somebody in the body has lasted long many people have started calling that past and self is soul because they think there is body and soul soul is life in this body and we are alive when the soul goes is gone soul never goes anywhere never comes anywhere it is only an inner body the sensory system with the mind and life and consciousness that we call soul is not the soul when we talk of transmigration there is no transmigration of soul at all i can tell you transmigration is completely confined to transmigration reincarnation of astral selves nothing more beyond that you cannot have trans transmigration that is real this all level 1 but most of the masters have said that is enlightenment the teaching say so the book say so i read lot of them i been to those masters so when we are able to do that much it's a very big change in our life right here we know death is not the end of life we know for certain because we have lived in that state and if we are able to practice this regularly we can go into a physical or non physical state whenever we like it's a great thing in life to be in physical that you want to be non physical you want to be is wonderful then you understand the real nature of what the physical body is nothing more then the self astral self using matter to become physical is nothing more of course how that's a long subject i can share with you sometime how matter is created to cover the astral self that's another interesting feature how the mind is created for perception to perceive perception is our main means of experience when we say i can see the world i can experience the world you're perceiving the world i'm trying to explain the word perception you cannot have any experience of the world anything outside of yourself without perception when we are the physical body the perceptions that we use are sense perception the five senses of perception and we can see things touch things why do we have five perceptions one or two should have been enough to experience the world because these five perceptions are helping us to make reality how do we check what is real here we check real this glass is my illusion is it hallucination or real oh i can touch it oh not only touch it i can see water is cold tastes so good real what has made it real more than one perception supposing it is only one perception 
You could have doubt in our mind. Is it real or not? We are checking reality of, of this physical world by using multiple perceptions. Do we need them? No. How can we determine whether we need them or not? I will give you a very easy solution. Not so easy, I am sorry, it's not so easy, but simple. I told you, if you withdraw your attention to the wakeful state, third eye center, while you are wakeful, not sleeping, you can withdraw your attention to the extent that you can find that you are nothing but life, mind, thinking, understanding mind, and sense perceptions. What about meditating? With that inner self. Now you are meditating with a physical self in order to see what is inside this body. What about meditating with the inner self, the same imaginative self? If you have practiced seeing yourself in the imaginative state at third eye center, have had enough practice to withdraw your attention from the body, then you will find you have the same control same will, same ability to meditate with the inner body. How do we do it? Close the inner eyes, withdraw the attention within that, practice. What will happen if you close your eyes, inner eyes, not these, these are already closed. When you close the inner eyes, these won't matter whether they are closed or open. I can tell you that. This doesn't matter at all. When you close your inner eyes with which you have practiced being there and imagined and remembered things that happened past and meditate by withdrawing your attention into your imaginative self inside, you open up an image of yourself which has no form. First step, the form is the same as this one. You open up a self which has no sense perceptions, but only perception. What is that reason? What kind of state is that? That you can withdraw attention by meditating within yourself, in the inner self, and gradually becoming unaware of the sense perceptions outside. What do you open up? You open up to an awareness of yourself that instantly perceives everything without having to break it up into seeing, touching, smelling. You got such a strange experience. For the first time, you being so used to using sense perception separately, you will wonder, how can I see music so clearly? How can I see it? It was sound. But you see it as clearly as you see it. There you discover that our consciousness is capable of direct perception without breaking it up into these. These break up was to create a reality at a lower level. You are discovering more of your own self. That your own self has the ability to develop perception where no breakup is needed. And anything you want to perceive, which is experience, any experience you can perceive directly. Who is perceiving that? The same self, not somebody else. What, what are you using to per use perception? Here, using eyes, ears. What are you using there for direct perception? Your mind, your thinking mind, your rational mind, your understanding mind. The mind we are using right now in this physical body for understanding things, the same mind is being used for direct perception. Personal experience. Go and try it. I am saying the method is very simple, clear, not easy. I agree, it's not easy. Why is it not easy? If the method is so simple, both these two steps I am telling you to discover the real nature of perception, therefore the real nature of creation. We cannot have any idea of creation without perception. If the whole creation is dependent upon a faculty we have of perception, and we can discover what perception is. It's a very big thing. Why are we, where is the problem if it's only withdrawing attention inside? 
they created the problem over a long period of time. That's why we're making it difficult. We have created a problem by assuming, accepting that what our current experience is, is the only reality. That's bad enough. Just to assume forever, this is the only reality. Nothing else is real. Okay, you are caught. You are caught. You can't discover anything. What a big assumption you have made without any proof at all. An assumption made merely on perception without any proof. This is the only reality. But that is not bad enough. We make it worse by saying we want to get things from this reality. Everything, including reality. And we begin to desire things of the outside experience. We not only desire things, we get attached to them. Do you know the only obstacle that makes meditation difficult is your desire and attachment for what is outside? What a simple statement I'm making, but true. What have we done? with our self. We have wasted our time of the self in developing a relationship with an experience outside by calling it reality and getting stuck to it and arguing to ourselves this is the only reality. Therefore, when we try to put our attention inside, attachments outside come into play. These attachments outside come running. Why do they come? Why should attachments come? Very strange but simple reason. We have a device for perception called the mind, human mind. The human mind has over time become ourself. We have identified ourselves with our mind. Why? We use it all the time for perception. And therefore, we think mind must be the self that is having perception. Perception is reality. That the only way we can have reality is through perception by the mind. Therefore, we have made a machine given to the self, an equipment given to the self, to generate thinking and time and space into ourself. We have totally misidentified ourselves with an equipment installed in our consciousness. Mind is a thinking machine. It has so many limitations that if we just ponder over it, how could we be there? Mind thinks. Mind reasons. Mind has logic. Mind tries to understand everything. And when we tell something that is not explainable, mind stops. I just gave an example. You can't see a mansion. Large mention in zero time, zero space, mind cannot see it. But when I said it, something you said, maybe it can be experienced. What was that? Which was that part of you? Which even for an instant thought, maybe that's possible somewhere. Forget about that. You all have from time to time an intuitive feeling, a gut feeling, this is going to happen. Mind has no role in that. Where is that coming from? We forget that there is, there is something much more in us than the mind. And it's a big blunder to identify ourselves only with the mind. But we have done it for so long, for so many lifetimes, for such a long period, that we say, I think that is me. Biggest mistake. When you do that big mistake, I think that is me, the mind has developed its own entity with our life and tries to preserve what we have given into it. Therefore, when you want to go beyond that by meditation, the mind runs against you and brings up all the attachments, all the memories which you wouldn't even get. You all be meditating, you know it. People tell me, oh, my mind is very bad, mind is very... Mind is not bad or good. It's a machine, you can make it good or bad. It's a thinking machine. It's a machine that rationalizes, uses logic. It's just a simple computer. Very efficient one though. Very effective too. But don't become a computer. Use it. 
mind has not been given to us as soul, as consciousness, as our own true self, as our immortal self. Mind was never given to us to identify with it. It was given to us to use it. Use it for what? Develop experiences of time and space. Develop experiences of perception. Develop experiences of understanding. Develop experiences of enjoying. Use it when you want to. In other words, look at the main function of the mind, thinking. Think what you want to think. We don't do that. We follow our mind what to think. We think we are thinking. No, we are not thinking. We are following the mind. Thinking is going automatically. Mind is taking it to any place it likes. We are being diverted into something that we don't want. Why? Mind wants it. We have to learn how to separate ourselves from the mind. I tell you simple exercise to start with for that process. Close your eyes. Imaginatively imagine you are sitting quietly, not speaking anything, not saying anything. For once sit quietly in your head, as quiet as you can be in your meditative state, as quiet in a quiet place and close your eyes and I am not going to think anything today. The mind will still think in front of you. You will hear the words of thought. You are not thinking. You decided not to think. You are just observing, listening. When you observe and listen, you will see the mind thinking bizarre things. Never stops. First time you may get an idea, you are not the mind. A good exercise. I encourage people who want to understand that mind is not the self to perform this exercise for themselves and see mind functions as an automatic machine in thinking anyway and to identify that because the mind is thinking, I am thinking, you are preventing your entry to any level of awareness beyond the mind. That is the biggest problem for going to a higher level of spirituality. I was very fortunate, I must tell you, that this great master, whose picture you see here, he told me, we can go beyond the mind. But the steps are simple. You have to realize you are not the body by experience. You have to realize even sense perceptions are merely divided perception. The real perception is coming from the mind. And you have to realize that the self is functioning as conscious being in spite of your thought. That thought is not you. You are using thought. And to do that, look at what happens in experiences, even in your body, even when you are here, which are not mental, which are not generated by the mind. What are those experiences? He listed a few experiences. I just mentioned one. Intuition, gut feeling, sudden knowing of something without thinking. It's coming from the self. It's not coming from the mind. It's coming from beyond the mind. It's coming right here. We don't have to go there to find out. It's happening here. Falling in love with a person. Instantaneous. No thought has ever occurred in there. When you fall in love, then you begin to think, is it real? Is it unreal? Can I accept it? Do I doubt it? But the love, experience of love. What is the experience of love, by the way? I have, I have to distinguish it from attachment. Because attachment means you like something, you say, I love it. When, when you say, I love something, what are you aware of at that time? I love this. You are aware of I as a thing and there is something happening between us. Duality, separation exists when you are attached. Okay, you fall in love. At that moment, what happens? Beloved is there, you forget yourself. I sometimes have said, is there anything that can take care of our ego, the I-ness? I tell you, I have researched. I-ness comes in everything. I am going to do this. I am going to destroy my ego. That's most ego. I cannot go away. 
I am going to meditate. I am doing this. I am going to surrender. All I, 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 all ego. How can you do anything without ego? Nothing. You can do nothing if you want to do something, it's always ego. What can happen if you don't want to do something? But you can be loved. You don't do anything. Then what happens? That's experience. For a moment, there's no eye. But the mind says, what's happening? Comes in immediately. Start thinking about it. And very often kills the, kills the experience of love. When you see that love is not coming from the mind, it cannot come from the mind, intuition cannot come from the mind, these features are existing somewhere in our consciousness. Where are they existing then? They are existing in the self beyond the mind. If you want to say there is a soul, I would say these are spiritual soul events. People say, is there a way to go beyond mind to discover not God, not creator, the truth about our own self? Yes. Answer given for a long time is love and devotion. Love and devotion. By two words, when somebody loves you, you automatically devote it. Devotion is merely an automatic built-in response to love. Somebody loves you, you automatically feel a response. We call it devotion. That's why we use both words. Love and devotion, love and devotion. That's the secret. If you want to do meditation, you must have the experience of love and devotion to go beyond the mind. Up to the mind, you can use I. Beyond the mind, no I. You have to be pulled. That is why we were talking of masters who pull you. Why? Because they are using a method, love and devotion. Perfect living masters. We call those who have gone above the mind. Why do we call them perfect living masters? Because if you examine very carefully, all imperfection comes from the mind. You stop thinking, there is no imperfection. You stop trying to understand, there is no imperfection. If you see the total picture, no imperfection. Small part, imperfect. Mind can never see the whole picture no matter how hard you try. But something in you can see the whole picture. I am not talking of the whole creation. I am even taking an example of a bunch of flowers. Here are the beautiful flowers. You can see the flowers and appreciate the beauty in one instant. Virtually in nanoseconds. If you want to analyze where the beauty comes from, this flower or that flower or that flower, that's the mind coming in and you fail to see the beauty that you first saw. Mind system is only analysis. Analytical system is the only system mind can employ. What is analysis? See in parts, break it. Soul goes synthesis, one picture, one grand picture. These experiences are available to us even now, the experience of love and devotion. A perfect living master is nothing more than a human being with that awareness that he can kindle a feeling of love with us, that we can be pulled by him. What is pull? Pull is just love. That he can make us feel that we have to go to him. That's the all. But then, why does he teach us meditation? If love and devotion is the only thing, in fact, somebody asked me a question in email a few days ago. Is it possible to go to our true home, such cunt, without meditation? My answer was very clear. Yes, we can. What is the requirement to go to our true home, to highest level, without meditation? I said, if the faith, if the love and devotion are unshakable, they are not shaken by anything, you go there. No meditation. But we can't have these. So therefore we use meditation. Perfect living masters for the sake of our minds become teachers. And somebody tells me, without doing anything you can go. Mind will never accept. 
Now I'll tell you what to do. Step one, step two, three. Oh, that makes sense to me. That is what meditation is all about. We need meditation for our mind, not for ourselves. We need love for ourselves. We need purest, real love that can pull us. We don't need too much thinking about it. That's the whole secret. There are some steps that we can deal with our mind. All the meditation is to deal with the mind. Meditation does not deal with the self at all. Meditation deals with the mind. Mind is the only obstacle to our realization and therefore we have to deal with it. So various kinds of meditational practices have been designed to deal with the mind. Some work better for some people, some other works better. The one that he taught me, my master, worked very good for me. Some people say the other person works better for them. I say, go ahead. It's all mind. It's not ourself. It's not spiritual. It's mental. All meditation is mental. Not only me mental, they make it even physical. People say, we have found the highest mantra to repeat. Words, physical words to repeat. That the physical word will give us truth and reality. Physical word don't even go beyond the astral plane. And the mind is not there. There is no question of language like we know it. And we are stuck with this all the ritualistic things outside. When I, I was at Harvard University to study economics, public administration, other things, out of curiosity, I took up a class in comparative religion. I was interested in knowing what is common in all religions. So I trying to see what is common. Maybe love and devotion is common. Maybe certain types of meditation are common. Maybe they know what to do with yourself that's common. It was, I, I studied 11 religions. The only common thing was, every religion said we are the only real one. All others are way fake. <laughs> only common thing I found. We, our God is the only real God. The way religions divided God, the way religions divided, what are they doing? Their founder said, go within. Every religion. Founder said, go within. What are they doing? Rituals outside. Change the ritual. Make a different religion. Change little more ritual. All ceremonies, rituals outside. And we are doing it in the name of God. Whom we have never seen, never experienced, never gone in. All prayer outside. What for? Not prayer to see God. Prayer and prayer. Give me health. Give me wealth, give me things. In the reality we are living in, we are praying for this more reality. Through religion, which is supposed to be a spiritual exercise. It's unfortunate that we have changed, altered spirituality into ritualistic religion. But that's the truth. You can go and examine it. Go inside. That's the truth. The secret is all inside. Nothing outside. Go inside. If you don't know how to go inside, learn it. A lot of people willing to teach you how to go inside. Go inside with guidance and go inside with help and find out who you are. When you discover who you are, I can assure you will know your ultimate creative power, all the creative powers, including the ultimate God. You'll find out. Thank you very much for listening so patiently. We'll take a break and I'll come back to you about 3.30 for a little while again.